also like you to believe he's not a baby eater. But he's never gone on record saying he isn't. Maybe he's too busy eating babies. I can't wait to eat this, baby. When's it gonna stop, Abe? How did JFK get my spaghetti video? Where'd you move here from, dumb? Hey, before we begin, uh, follow El Twitter. The last one got banned because I posted Viper the Rapper. Follow El Instagram. I post La Memes. Sub to La Patreon. I need money. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, oh, and I have a Threads now, too. Ezra Miller did what to a 15-year-old? Ayo. We're here. Oh, Jesus Christ, finally I can stop writing this shit. The Reagan bot will tell you what to do. Now, get out of my shit. By the way, Kanye, you sound different. You okay, man? I'm just really f***ing tired, bro. Get off my d Whoa, where are we? We are in the one place that has to have been corrupted by capitalism ah! about 15 weeks ago. You forgot to pick up the tomatoes on this fateful day. We're here to change history and remind you to pick up the tomatoes. That, that, that's it? That, that's the whole fucking lore? We're also these AI voice services are using paid models now. Fucking goddamn grifters. You know what? I'm tired of woke cinema. This past weekend, we had a Barbie, a movie so woke that my hero, Ben Shapiro, made a 40-minute video on it. <laughs> Imagine making a 40-minute video on something. That's, uh, why is there a Verizon wireless sponsor here? Now, I didn't see the movie, but mainly because I don't really have anyone to see it with. Listen, if you're single and you look like this and live in my area, my address is... Don't even get me started on Oppenheimer, or as I call it, Wokenheimer. Now this woke Hollywood agenda is telling me that nuclear warfare is bad? I'm tired of this shit! I just need pure cinema. <laughs> One that won't bend the knee to the librarian taking over this country. Hold on, let me go on my favorite app. <laughs> Let's uh, check the old timeline here. I'll dare to say that in a few months, this app will love The Flash. Hmm, The Flash, huh? I'm listening, I'm listening. Wait a minute, is that Ke 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 Kevin Smith? Oh, you know he cried during that bit. Oh, what did this guy say? People cannot like The Flash and some of the CGI. That's their right. But to purposefully push altered CGI to create a false narrative is honestly the most disgusting thing I've seen in a while. Damn, I I can't believe this movie's a victim of the cancel culture. Oh my god, even Ed Boone's getting on this. And look at him, he's beefing with Watch Mojo right here. The blandest, most faceless deus ex company on the planet. Not counting the other ones. The whole project of disliking the 2023 Flash movie has been funded and manipulated mainly by wealthy bankers. Is that so? And by that I mean random Twitter users. And by Twitter I mean X. It's like picking beef with goddamn chat GPT. Yeah, but that backflip though. This is what's wrong with the internet. Why not ask which is the best cameo? Because negative stories get more engagement. Doesn't Ed Boon work for Warner Brothers? This is like if Joel Osteen beefed with a separate megachurch. But come on now, I need something hard. Something for me, a real man. I need a real hardcore movie experience. The way Batman chased Falcone's henchmen down Gotham City will forever be legendary. Oh damn, this movie's getting a little more hardcore. I've never seen a movie with a chase scene before. Holy shit! The Flash killing a Kryptonian was one of the most brutal shots in DC history. Oh, damn, so this is like an R-rated movie. <laughs> Man, this movie sounds pretty badass. I'm gonna check this shit out now, actually. Wow, damn, the comedic irony was crazy. That, that shit was garbage. The Flash. More like belongs in the trash. The Flash is a box office disaster. It's also a PR disaster. It's also a narrative disaster. This thing is just complete garbage. Now first, let's get the elephant out of the room here. Yes, Ezra Miller is the lead actor. Yes, they did choke and slam a female fan of theirs. Yes, they did kidnap and groom a 12-year-old girl. Yes, I do think... I think that is a very bad thing to do. Yes, I will be laughing when Ezra Miller fucking drops dead. Please hold your applause for my incredibly brave opinion. The thing is though, even with all that PR nightmare shit, removing it still won't let the film outrun itself, but I'm crashed. The Flash is just not very good. It's like Spider-Man No Way Home, but like an eighth as fun. It's a visually nauseating dribble. And at points, pretty fucking disgusting. This is one of the most soulless films of the year, if not of all time. This feels like 
a movie from 2006. Just so many wrong decisions here. Are they stupid? So our film opens with Barry Allen at a coffee shop. We get some pretty obnoxious dialogue. We are bananas, raisins, H honey, C wow. cheese. But then Alfred calls him and is all like, Oh, mate, oh, we got a robbery, mate. So after some funny frustration, he becomes the Flash. But is interrupted by a group of miners. Oh, Ezra was real excited during this scene. Oh, you can tell. So the Flash begins running and oh, 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 God. Who greenlit this Silent Hill 1 looking ass cutscene? So the Flash makes it to whatever this problem is. Meanwhile, Batman's here with his stupid ass CGI cow. Wow, bro. Rocksteady outdid themselves with this one. Best game of 2009 right here. We get some witty dialogue and good acting, if you want to call it that. Thanks for saving me from the sinkhole, Flash. They get some footage from Fight Club the video game. <laughs> Holy hell, what happened with the CGI in this movie? This looks horrid. I know the bitrate's kind of bad because my recording software went kind of poop poop pee pee but look how obvious this green screen is jesus why does the flash look so weird what is this camera angle what's with these cat woman looking ass babies oh my god there's a baby what <laughs> what who is writing this shit what? So the Flash runs up to save the baby, and he puts a baby in a microwave. I will say this, the CGI is so garbage, I'm kind of entertained. Wait, what's going on here? Hold on, what? Why is there a baby stare? This is like Spider-Man 2001 from 2001. You then get the weirdest pace collections of shots I've ever seen. Like, look at this. This is pace like a dream I'm having. He then takes the baby out of the microwave and starts staring at it really weirdly. Oh, the things I'll do to you when you're 12. Oh, years old. We then get an attempt at comedy. I understand that these events can be psychologically scarring. Jesus Christ, even without the allegations, Ezra Miller is so charismaless. We then get the most legendary action scene ever, a completely average car chase scene. Of course, with some pretty awful CGI, what the hell is this? Batman then falls off a bridge, but thankfully Wonder Woman saves him. Holy shit, I can't believe it. It's Wonder Woman in a non-Wonder Woman movie. I have never seen this before. You're a little baller. <laughs> Oh, so they're Plug. fucking now? Was this established anywhere else? Don't answer that, I don't care. You are welcome. My ego's far too big to say thank you to someone else. That man wouldn't say that. So this all-powerful persona to compensate for my child's of Trump. Oh, it's the lasso, the lasso of, of Trump. Yes, I know. Shut the fuck up. I know sex exists. I've just never experienced What this. is going on? So I'm not sure what that was, but it's over now, so. <laughs> also, Batman's bat suit looks garbage. Airsoft looking ass. So the Flash grabs his breakfast and goes back to the detective agency where he works at. And his boss is all like, God damn it, Barry, you're slacking off, boy. You got a lot of potential, but you're squandering it, Barry. You're squandering it. Barry then goes outside and meets the love interest of the movie. And he tries rizzing her up with this Dom Corleone looking ass haircut. God damn. She then brings up his incarcerated dad. And the Flash is all like, my huh? dad didn't kill my mom. And this causes Ezra Miller to leave. Barry then calls his dad when he gets home. And they're having trouble proving the dad is innocent. Oh no. Barry then goes to his childhood home and has an emotional flashback of his mom. By the way, she's dead. And Barry is so sad about this that he runs so hard that he goes into this blue area. Oh no, the CGI is melting. Whoa. He then runs into a GameCube tech demo. And he sees the babies from early- <laughs> What? Why is it just his head? What? Cut to him explaining this to Batman now. And he gives him the whole Tony Stark Spider-Man thing. Ugh, it's too dangerous. Don't do it, Barry. Don't. Oh, but I can save my mommy, though. Boy, it's the scars that keep us who we are. If you've seen Spider-Man Homecoming, you know how derivative this is. Barry, this could all be prevented if you subscribe to Verizon Wireless. The new Verizon Wireless Premium plan allows Barry's love interest and comes out of nowhere. They're fancy friends. Yeah, it was an Uber. Exact. Oh my god, they're fucking obnoxious. Ezra Miller is like a mix of Onision and fucking McLovin. All right. You look like a future pedophile in this picture, number one. How do we get Ezra Miller to never say a single word ever again? Apparently, they still got a woman in their apartment, though. Hey, maybe she'll be legal this time, huh, Ezra? So anyways, a bunch of talking happens, and, uh, yeah. But the female character gives Barry the idea to go back in time. So he does, as we see the worst of PS3 graphics of all time. So he gives his mom some tomatoes so she's not murdered somehow. And it starts to work, but then he's attacked by this thing who punches him into this timeline. He then sees his dead mom who 
is alive and he is very happy. But then the real Barry Allen comes home and he's like, oh shit, I gotta do something about this. So he approaches him and reveals that he's also Barry Allen. Which means, unfortunately, there are now two Ezra Millers in this movie. And to make things even worse, this Ezra Miller is intentionally annoying now. Because they're now playing a slacker version of this character who's oh. annoying as fuck. <laughs> This is my garbage. Yeah. Okay, you don't stop talking. Oh no, they're becoming self-aware. It's not charming. It's abrasive and exhausting, and oh my god, I am starting to realize what people mean. Correct! So, original Barry needs to go home, and for whatever contrived reason, he begins to worry that he won't get the powers or something. I don't know. But they need to recreate the Flash origin story. So, they sneak into the Flash origin story center, but then they get into an argument, and the lightning and chemicals strike them in this goofy uh, way. And now they need to escape from the Popo. But uh oh, he no longer has his powers now. Barry then makes a bunch of fucking noise and doesn't get detected. And now we're back at the apartment. I guess. Yeah, they just uh, made it back safe and sound. How did they do it? I don't fucking know. But turns out the annoying Barry now has the powers. And he uses it to run in front of a green screen. And to eat pizza. But so then catches on fire and is naked now. And it seems it's a bunch of fucking noise. Like the Smosh video. Now, I can't show this to you because YouTube won't let me play a PG-13 movie for you. But let me just say, Ezra Miller's asshole is something I did not need to see. So Ezra Miller then explains Ezra Miller lore to Ezra Miller. And now it's the next day by the way. I think that's important to note. What is also important to note, because it's convenient now, is that this movie is very, 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 very loosely based on an actual comic arc called the Flashpoint Paradox. It's probably the only Flash story that people actually know about, which is really weird because for a first Flash movie, it's a really bad story to adapt. And judging that it's literally about the Flash going to an alternate timeline, where the typical Flash events uh, didn't happen. Now, this isn't impossible since Flashpoint was actually adapted into to an animated movie. But the problem with the Flash movies is that they crunch so much information at you. The stuff like his origin story feels like it would be good if you already established his origin story in a previous movie. The Flash's mom being dead is also extremely mishandled, where it's crunched together in a very sloppy flashback scene. A scene that follows a goofy baby-saving scene. So both tonally and pacing-wise, this film is a complete and utter mess. Despite being two and a half hours long, this film runs at a breakneck speed, and now you can't properly digest any emotional events that happen in this thing. Now, I really don't think the Flash movie had to copy Flashpoint, like, verbatim. But maybe it should have put its ego away and taken a few more cues. Especially if it's going to be so narratively inferior. Again, the flashback scene is so weirdly paced and placed. Meanwhile, in the original Flashpoint, it begins with the flashback. So immediately you understand this character's trauma going forward. And on top of that, it's also just a better written. Giving some very nice, subtle foreshadowing. But being hidden under a genuinely just a touching relationship. Meanwhile, in the Flash movie, they're in a rush to get it out of the way just so you know what happens to the Flash. It's also just way goofier here, too. And not given the weight it really should be given. Also, um, spoiler alert, the fact that it was the Flash that ran back in time to change the history. In the original Flashpoint, uh, that was a plot twist at the end. This made the original work so much more interesting. It gave so much more mystery to this world. It also helped that Reverse Flash was the villain of the movie. So you even get a little red herring to throw you off. I made them draw Lola Bunny with fewer sexual features so that you wouldn't be horny. Meanwhile, in the Flash movie, it's like Wonder Woman 1984, where immediately the moral and themes are just so obvious. So you pretty much already know how it's going to end. Anyway, so in the actual Flash movie, more shit happens, I guess. Sorry, can we move on? I couldn't have said it better myself, convenient clip of this movie. The Flash is then walking to this restaurant and see a transmission from Zod from Man of Steel. Now, Man of Steel is not a masterpiece or anything, far from it. But the general Zod transmission is actually really creepy and well done. I love how in the original movie, he's masked in bitrate feedback. It really feels like a weird alien transmission. And while I have a lot of problems with Man of Steel's writing, the Zod transmission isn't one of those examples. I have journeyed across an ocean of stars to reach you. Meanwhile, in the Flash, <laughs> This looks horrible. Is this a PS3 this? game? Hello, this is Matthew's mother and legal guardian. Now they're all like, oh no, he's trying to find Superman. Which, first of all, I love how the villain of the Flash movie isn't a Flash villain. Even though the most iconic Flash villain and the villain of the original Flashpoint was literally the reverse Flash, a man who can travel through time. But then it gets even better because the Flash then reveals that he was in Metropolis during Man of Steel. Which is really fucking funny because everyone was in Metropolis during Man of Steel. This means that Superman, Batman, and The Flash were all conveniently there. Wow, what a crazy coincidence. Every superhero ever was just in Metropolis. There's this kid, and I... Penis! I got him, but then I... 
get his dad. Oh, so like the exact same arc as Batman and Batman v Superman. Nice. So they all go home and we meet the other Flash's obnoxious roommates. And the other superheroes don't exist. Oh no. There's also a joke where Eric Stoltz is Marty McFly. Because uh, time travel. But turns out Batman exists in this world. So they go over to Wayne Manor and go inside of Wayne Manor. And if you've seen any marketing for this movie, you know where this is going. Someone comes out and attacks them and turns out it's Michael Keaton's wow. Batman. Who for some reason knows all about quantum theory and time travel. And knows it well enough to give exposition with a and fucking I, spaghetti. But of course not before Barry explains to him that... You and I are friends. Yeah, you, you're like... Probably my best friend. I love how because the DCEU is such a mess, that this is the first time I've realized that The Flash and Batman are best friends in this universe. We were so busy trying to make bullshit, we forgot to develop our characters. Now again, I have no clue how Michael Keaton Batman knows about time travel and whatnot. And judging that the Michael Keaton Batman movies had nothing to do with time travel. What's also great is how little the tone of this movie tries to actually incorporate the tone of the original Batman movies. Oh, what's that? You like the macabre Tim Burtonisms of those movies? Yeah, fuck that, bro. You get and teal color grading. Let's go! This is what Birdman was about, wasn't it? God damn it. Also, back to the original Flashpoint, that had a way more interesting version of Bruce Wayne because it wasn't Bruce Wayne. In the original Flashpoint, the timeline changed to where it was Thomas Wayne, who was obviously the Batman's dad, by the way, who survived the Crime Alley shootout, and he became Batman as a result. However, Thomas Wayne is a much more brutal Batman. He runs casinos, he uses guns, he kills people, and this is an actual contrast between this Batman and the Batman we actually no. For one thing, it's a nod to those crazy-ass comics like Batman Odyssey and Batman Year 2 where he's using guns. But for another thing, it's interesting how Batman's dad and Batman himself have different philosophies. And how Thomas Wayne's moral code is basically by any means necessary. Again, this is completely absent from the Flash movie. And a lot of this narrative complexity is tossed to the wayside for basic nostalgia bait. Where they have Michael Keaton playing as Batman and that's kind of it. The Flash movie could have remedied this by making Michael Keaton Thomas Wayne. For one thing, it could be a kind of cool deconstruction of nostalgia bait, and for another thing, you'd have a lot more narrative freedom to not have the tone of the Tim Burton movies, as it would not be Tim Burton's Batman. It would be Michael Keaton playing Thomas Wayne instead. However, in the actual movie, it's all just soulless garbage. Pure desperation trying to get audience members in seats. Oh, By the way, it's not explained why Batman stopped being Batman. Or again, how he knows all about time travel and whatnot. Except it is in a minute-long deleted scene. They cut out crucial information from this movie. I would have probably complained about it anyways, but Jesus Christ, it would have at least been in. So because the Flash needs to find Superman, he's like, hey, Batman, help us find Superman. But Batman's all like, no, I'm not gonna do it because I'm sad now. So the Flashes sneak back into the Batcave. Very convenient, it works the exact same way as Ben Affleck's Batcave. But then the other Flash gets on the other Flash's nerves and a fight breaks out. You just walk around thinking that you're so funny and so cool. And it's embarrassing. God damn, Ezra Miller's spitting facts right now. So long story short, the Flash does shit to convince Bruce Wayne to become Batman again. And so Michael Keaton Batman opens up the Batcave and becomes Batman again. Hip hip hooray, soulless garbage. So all the characters leave in the Batwing and yeah. And they make it to Siberia no, from no, Time no. Splitters ah! 2. One of the Flashes then alerts everyone of their presence because he's a dumbass. Oh. This results in some action scenes and yeah. And they find and go inside this pod from Krypton. Where they find this girl, so they take her. And they escape with her. And then five million years of unimportant action later. The characters are surrounded, but thankfully the girl starts flying because she's Supergirl the whole time. And she starts beating up people and saving our heroes. This should be looking like Gotham Knights combat. Holy shit. What is this? A PS3 looking at his face. Ew. <laughs> Supergirl then passes out and they go home when Supergirl wakes up. And she's all like, I am Kara, who is Supergirl. I will say, I do kind of like Supergirl in this movie. It's a very different, much more angry take, which is actually really interesting. And the actress who played her, Sasha Cali. I don't know who you are, but you did a good job. I just wish you were in a <laughs> way better movie. Anyway, she's all like, I came down to protect Superman. And after healing up for a bit, she's all like, ugh, I hate humans, and then leaves. And she flies over to Zod's PS3 era shit. Why does this movie fucking look like Red Alert 3? Jesus Christ. And Supergirl is mortified by Zod. The evilness. Meanwhile, Flash and Batman do one of three things they took from the original story, and that's to recreate the Flash's original powers, but sadly failing. Man, if this killed Ezra Miller, I'd be so happy right now. But thankfully, Supergirl comes back, and she carries him up to the heavens so he can get struck again, and it works, and he has his powers back. Yay. So now he's the Flash again. And also, the other Flash made a really shitty suit out of a Michael Keaton suit. It's very comedic, I think. So now the gang's all together, but not before a Michael Keaton movie misquote. You wanna get nuts? 
Let's get nuts. You should be choking on these nuts. Oh, yes. Let's repurpose a line and remove all the context. Why does he say, let's get nuts here? It doesn't make any fucking sense for him to say that so here. So now it's time for the final battle. So the berries are Fortnite dropped into the fucking desert. Oh, uh, God. It still looks like dog shit. Where even is this? A goddamn Gmod map? So Supergirl flies up to the completely underwritten Zod. Who pulls out his completely shitty looking wristwatch. And for no reason gives a bunch of expository dialogue in the middle of this battlefield. Where he reveals that he found Superman's pod in space and killed Superman. This makes Supergirl very mad and she punches Zod into the battlefield. Meanwhile, we get the worst action scene I've seen in a minute. This looks like an original Xbox video game. Oh my god. Man, this is embarrassing, man. What the hell? Well, look at this fucking shit. This looks like garbage. Ew. Why does the bat ship fly like that? Ew. Why is the Flash doing a goddamn so Looney Tune yeah, maneuver? So and furthermore, why does the scene last for 5,000 goddamn years? Yeah, by the way, we have like 30 minutes of the movie left in this two and a half hour movie. Yeah, better late than never to mention this. This film's fucking bloated. It's like Wonder Woman 1984 with how bloated this shit is. There are plenty of scenes where pretty much nothing happens and could easily be condensed down. I will say this, there's at least more going on than Wonder Woman 1984. The Flash does more stuff in the movie. But still, uh, why is this two and a half hours? Most of it is on this last minute fight scene too, by the way. It's like, Jesus Christ, couldn't you make this scene a little shorter? So anyways, Michael Keaton dies in the funniest way I've ever seen. No! You don't want to do a second take on that? So Supergirl also dies. So the Flashes go back in time and they save Batman and Supergirl. But then Zod kills Supergirl and Batman again. So the Flashes go back in time. And the one Flash goes, you can't do this. But the other Flash goes, yes, I can. And he ends up fucking up time by making more bad CGI characters get into it. And there's a whole emotional like argument or something. I don't really care at this point. You can tell it's emotionally intense because I'm yelling now, Barry. But, oh, look, it's the black. <laughs> oh my God, it's dark Flash. Why does he look like a Metal Gear Survive enemy? So it's revealed that the big bad guy is actually Barry the whole time. And it's a representation of Barry wanting to make everything perfect and not have his mom be murdered. That way, if my grandma were to watch this movie, she'll think it's deep. Remember guys, superhero comics aren't really art. By the way, I just got a call from Alan Moore. He fucking hates you. You know, what else is new? <laughs> Am I right? Jesus Christ. I could write this So the world begins colliding, and we get easily the most disgusting part of this movie, which is resurrecting dead actors. They show off a bunch of multiverse shit in this movie, and we see Christopher Reeves, which is already one thing. It's pretty bad that they're CGIing Christopher Reeves from the dead, purely for a soulless cameo. But what's even worse is they bring out George Reeves. This was the actor for Superman throughout the 1950s. The issue is that he was constantly typecasted to play as Superman. Anything outside of Superman was a failed career for him. And this caused him to allegedly suffer from depression. And on June 16th of 1959, he was found dead in his bedroom, caused by a parent suicide by a gunshot wound to the head. Now, there are a lot of conspiracy theories around his death, but none of them are really relevant here. The point is that the general narrative is that being typecasted as Superman caused George to sadly take his own life. So let me just say, it is incredibly fucked up to use that person in a CGI Marvel styled cameo. The man didn't even have any family to consult with. So they couldn't and didn't even really ask anyone. It reminds me of that Chippendale Rescue Rangers movie, when they chose the bad guy to be Peter Pan, and gave him a very similar backstory to the actual child actor of Peter Pan, who very similarly was typecasted for his age. And then when Disney was done with him, they threw him out like garbage, only for him to die of a drug overdose in 1968. But both of these, for different reasons, are equally disgusting. In the case of The Flash, it's just straight up exploitative. It's clearly made so you can point and go, look, look, I recognize him from that old thing. Well, the story behind George George Reeves is that he was tired of being defined as Superman, which caused his unfortunate death. And you know for a fact this isn't being done out of a tribute at all. And if you ask me, I think things are about to get much worse. This whole thing is already super fucking dark, but it's about to get like long-term scary. Where we're about to completely replace the individuality of actors with whatever can print more money and attention. Ethics be damned. You have a single fact to back that up. Well, judging that we're both in an actor's and a writer's strike over concerns over AI, I kinda do. Hollywood is already proposed using AI for both actors and writers. In that groundbreaking AI proposal, they propose that our background performers should be able to be scanned, get paid for one day's pay, and their company should own that scan, their image, their likeness, and should be able to use it for the rest of eternity in any project they want with no consent and no compensation. That's a pretty big claim. And this is some deus section. This is pretty terrifying. Do you think so? Can I do 
understood was one satisfied by a copy. Now, we can implement the same functionality with data mining algorithms. No one will ever worship a software entity peering at them through a camera. And look, if someone consents to it, that's a whole different thing. But even then, for one thing, you have to understand it's not going to be for your tribute. It's just going to be for, you know, the corporate interests. Corporations are so big, you don't even know who you're working for. That's terror. And for another thing, it doesn't justify bringing back someone from the dead whose life was ruined by Superman. It doesn't matter if he's just standing around for five seconds with PS3 graphics. If you're bringing him back, that's disrespectful enough. Anyways, I don't know how to transition this back to being funny again. Uh... I will have to kill you myself. <laughs> Oh, also in this scene, we get a Superman Lives cameo. Oh, what? You don't know what Superman Lives is? Well, buddy, Superman Lives was a canceled Superman movie made in the 90s. It was gonna have Nicolas Cage as Superman, and there was a giant spider, and Tim Burton was directing it. Now, let's say you're an average moviegoer, right? You may be wondering, why the fuck is there an L.A. noir creepy-ass Nick Cage being Superman? You would have to know that in the 90s, there was a canceled Superman movie that featured all of this. Of course, however, you will never never be able to watch this cancelled 90s movie. The best you're gonna get is the stupid ass CGI shot. They are nostalgia baiting for a movie that doesn't even fucking exist. What the hell is the point of this? Wouldn't you want to see like Superman lives as an actual project, not a five second scene in a goddamn other movie 20 years later? Also, yes, Nick Cage does look fucking gross in this movie. Ew, CG. The worlds are colliding and collapsing. Oh no. I'm getting real tired of talking about this movie, so uh... Dark Flash is all like, I made you make me or something. I gotta fix things, bro. And then the Flash kills himself, I guess. Which then defeats the Dark Flash. And then the best thing ever happens. Ezra Miller dies. But now the Flash has to let his mom die or something now. Time travel. So the Flash talks to his mom. It's very sad. I'd maybe feel something if this movie had a better everything. So he puts the tomatoes back to allow his mom to get murdered. Why didn't he travel back in time to find out who murdered his mom? I don't fucking know. But the Flash is now in his normal timeline and he goes to court and his dad is now innocent. Damn, I forgot that was a plot point in this thing. So the Flash saves the day, he rizzes up his girlfriend. Oh, and George Clooney is Batman now. Who the fuck is this? Now, look, I would normally complain about this, but I'm gonna be honest. Uh, this was kind of funny. What isn't nearly as funny is a minute-long after credit scene of the Flash just waddling around with Aquaman who isn't Aquaman because he fucked up the timeline. It's so overly long. Yeah, I get it. Aquaman is drunk. Funny. And uh, that's the, the whole movie, I guess. Um, and that was a complete fucking train wreck. And you know what? I'm getting real tired of editing this thing. So I'm gonna outsource this last part to a different company. Hold on, give me a sec. Greetings, friend. Superb! This is easily one of the most soulless movies I've ever watched. Just so much about it is unappealing and awful. It has this really stupid, overly lighthearted tone, and yet is incorporating iconography from like the gritty Zack Snyder movies in a desperate attempt to get you to like something about it. Visually, the film is awful with its overusage of really rubbery CGI. And again, the film is just taking all these DC things you know about, but never builds on them in any actual meaningful way. Hey, look, guys, it's wow. the general plot outline of Flashpoint. But we have Michael Keaton Batman in it and Supergirl. You know who that is, right? And we have Zod from Man of Steel. Oh, and we have the old Superman for five seconds and Superman lives for 15 seconds. The film takes from everything else but never has an identity of its own. And what you get is the most desperate film I've ever seen. It's so desperate for your approval. It's pretty much we have Spider-Verse at a home. We have no way home at a home. This movie never builds off the extended continuity that it is reaching from. Michael Keaton's Batman is just kind of there, characteristically completely far removed from his original appearance in the first two Batman movies. Zod is here, but has the personality of a graham cracker. The Supergirl is here with a great actress and a great new take, but uh-oh, it's underdeveloped. And this is all on top of the movie juggling two flashes, by the way. This is a weird case of the film both being too fast and yet too bloated and long. The film has this absolutely breakneck speed and yet is so bloated with a bunch of stuff that it never gives anything time to process. Again, Flashpoint was able to do this in about half the runtime, with way more interesting ideas, no less. And once again, bringing back dead actors for cameos is deplorable. Oh yeah, uh, Ezra Miller is garbage, by the way. They're really bad. They act more like they're in a YouTube video than in a fucking movie. So yeah, final thoughts. Uh, movie bad. Uh, this is your fault, George Clooney. Fuck you in the lanes you came with. Me and you ain't on the same shit. You ain't in my lane, bitch, nah. Oh, that shit in fifth, bro.
Charlie on my wrist. Ay, baby, you a son. I'm my only wish. I'm counting blue honeys. I'm too money. Ay, I'm a little bitch. She too lovely. Yeah, hanging up and calling me right back. Ay, baby, why you calling me like that? Yeah, getting high with the seat. Lay back. Baby, gon' relax. Yeah, Ay, they don't know the half. Yeah, no matter what happened, I got your back. Yeah. 